Okay, so we are going to fix the sunroof in the E36 today. Um, it had some issues where it wouldn't slide back. It was binding. It was actually the headliner. You can see the headliner physically pushing down. So what we're going to do is replace all the plastic pieces that typically break on these. This one is already broken. So I ordered this. I, these are really was the best kit I could find for the money. This was like 65 bucks on eBay. Came from Istanbul, Turkey. Um, comes with the new plastic pieces that go here. These sliders that go here. Comes with these little bushings that fit in the arm where the arm uh, ties in. Comes with the new metal pieces, new pins, a new gear if you want it. For the, I think that's for the motor where the motor connects to it. Um, and then it comes with the new arms. So not bad for 65 bucks. It even comes with a little packet of Turkish coffee. You're gonna try it, right, Mike? You know, hopefully it's, that's all it really is. Um, anyway, so that's what we're gonna do. And then on top of that, what we found was that these, this is what, this is how you get it apart essentially. See how this is sitting up like this? Someone put a sheet metal screw leak and pull it out, stripped out. And this was cockeyed, which was causing the, everything to bind. So this is not the factory screw. It actually, the factory screw looks like this one. It's a Torx head and this one's actually stripped out too. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna through screw them with these five millimeter screws and nylock nuts on the back side. I don't believe it'll interfere with anything. The only thing that comes in contact with this is, is a headliner. And I think, I don't think it's gonna stick out down far enough to bother anything. So I'll, through screw it, get it nice and tight, and then what I'll do is I will trim the back side of the screw off whatever protrudes through the through the nylock, and I'll trim it off with a grinder. That way it'll be nice and flush. Anyway, so what was happening is this, where did I put that piece? So this piece, because it was stripped out, this was loose, like it was kind of sitting up like that. And this cable was catching and binding on this, this track here, and, and then it wouldn't, it was forcing these tubes that carry the cable through outward and down. And that was what was bulging the headliner because this was, this was stuck here. It had no place to go. The motor's trying to turn, it's pushing the tubing out. So that's, that's, that was the first sign that it wasn't working right. And it would only go back so far. So anyway, as we got it apart, we found, kind of figured out what was going on, did some detective work. So this should handle it. It should work like a champ, I hope. So I think we'll get started pulling it out. I've oh, got the uh, motor installed back into it and there's a, there's a crank that comes with the car and you can manually override the motor. So we'll do that to, to bring everything forward. This is actually how you get it apart. So once these are out, as this comes out, these pieces that would normally go here that are normally captive, they can actually fit in. So there's a, there's a spot in the cable where this spiral wound stuff is not there this drops in there's a there's a tab on either side that pulls it along with the cable so i'll show you we'll we'll get it pulled forward and you'll you'll see what i'm talking about right. so now that you see it's cranked forward now you can see that the cable there's one's i gotta move that one forward a little more now you can see that will come out so now you can see that can come out so this piece this is what pulls it back and forth. These cables have this termination on it. This fits in, and then when you crank it back, it sucks it back into the track. So there's that one. I'm watching all these Evo videos. Mm -hmm. Like, they're like buying all these parts. Like, step one, wash the car with freaking dirt balls. Vacuum the floors, clean out the engine bay. Like, yeah. spray it out. Yeah. No, no, no. No, 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 everything's gotta be filthy, dirty, gross. They bought like a you know twenty-eight hundred dollar header, you yeah. know, uh, exhaust manifold. Like, yeah. Buy like an eight dollar bottle of all-purpose cleaner and a brush. Clean out your engine bay, you filthy dirt ball. We're just to live by. So I think I figured out how it how it happened. So back in the day when the cars were new. Mm -hmm forums existed right mm -hmm. so that's when the guys that had means and were like put together right and, and like on their way to be grown-ups yeah they were right? buying them newer so they buying were more new, expensive they were more successful you're buying volks and brembos and yeah. like the cars are really clean mm -hmm. and nice and neat 
Well, now, They're for old. a while, well, it's kind of come back. Mm -hmm. Now the cars are starting to come up in value. But for a while, all these cars, you, the in -between you, time, you would buy an E36 for, you know, for $8,000. Yeah. And so now you know, all the cheap ones have like 180,000 miles and they've had nine owners. Yeah. And every owner adds their little bit of cheeseburger fill. <laughs> cheeseburger fill. Right? I like that, and so, yeah. And some, apparently they all live on a dirt road because it's all <laughs> dust plumed up, right? <laughs> and so if I'm like a like a 19 year old kid with not a lot of money and I buy like an $8,000 car, mm -hmm. what's the first thing you're gonna do? I'm going to clean, clean it. that thing yeah. like it's never been clean in the yeah. history of clean. Yeah. Now, granted, I'm not going to be using fancy stuff, but right, you clean it. I'm going to use Dawn and yeah. freaking clean the thing. Yeah. Nope, that's not how they work. Just yep. pile on the dirt. Yep. It's so frustrating watching all these videos. Yeah. I can see that. But all these idiot kids, like, I, I want to start host, hosting <laughs> seminars on this. Uh, Maddie's tips for, for successful life. Before mm -hmm. you buy, you know, an eighteen hundred dollar intercooler, mm -hmm. clean it. Mm -hmm. It drives me crazy. It's good advice. I, I know exactly what you're talking about too, because I've, I've watched I said don't, videos. I just don't understand how you could be a car enthusiast. They just can't, they can't even see it. Like it's yeah. like not even there. Yeah. Just imagine what their bed sheets are like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> their pillowcases. Oh, gosh. Yellow stain. You know, just <laughs> oh, dirt. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that, Mike? 100% true. <laughs> it probably is. They probably wash their bath towel like every six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they've never washed like below their waist. You know, just water drips down on your feet. Like they probably never wash their feet. These are the people that I'm watching all these videos of when I was doing E36, the same thing. I'm doing all the, the Evo stuff. Because yeah. we lost all the original Evo content. Right, right. So now there's a gap. Yep. And then that gap will host hopefully be filled with the next generation of when people buying 70, 80,000. Yeah. People. Successful guys that'll restore them, do everything properly and they're cleaner. But you just don't have any chance in life if that's the way it is for you. You've got no chance yeah. because that's the way your job is. That's the way your money is. That's the way yep. your, your refrigerator, everything, their yeah. whole lives are that way. Yeah. I just cannot relate. No. I don't think you were ever a dirt ball your entire life. This what they would do is probably just cut the cables and just push the sunroof up. <laughs> or just use the hand crankaroo there instead. Yep. Dang it, man. It's gonna be okay. It doesn't, and, and I know what people are gonna say is you, you know, you, uh, you can say because you have money. Well, before you have money, things to me, this is what I don't understand, like the like trailer parks that are trashed. Like when we lived in a trailer, that Everything was, was freaking dialed, yeah. man. Yeah. I'm telling you, I never, yeah. You know, Your mom had everything. I could live there now, and my mom yeah. and dad had that place dying. Yeah. yeah, I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. And then you have neighbors that freaking trash everywhere. Like, Old sofas doing? out front. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But there's a reason why they're not still there. Yeah. They got out. I like it, though. <laughs> It's very entertaining. You know it's the truth. Yeah, I know it is. That's why it's so entertaining. Yeah, it's pretty bad. All right. So, okay, Mike. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to assemble this thing here off the car. So this, this goes on this way, like through here, like that. Then this plastic piece here, this one is this side. So this goes here, and then there's this pin that comes with it. This pin goes through and holds it all together. So this whole diameter is larger. This end is smaller, so that knurled end goes into there and, and, and kind of locks that pin in. So let me tap it in right here. There. So now we've got that pin in there. That's the way the piece goes. So this will, where's the arm? Let me grab the arm. So this arm is orientated this way. So we'll slide this through like that. And then we can take this one now out of the way. Take this piece out. This is the broken one. 
Now this goes in its place. It goes in like that. And now that is where that goes. Okay, and then when we crank it back, it'll bring this piece back. And then this other piece here, we have a new one right here. So this goes in here. Oh, and I almost forgot. These have to go on too. These go here. I mean, we are dry fitting, but these go on here like this. So I got to cut this piece off in between, but these go here. That's what this slides into. It's like they're like little guide bushings. So let's cut these off. This one's the one that was missing one of these two. So this sunroof had been apart before because obviously it had the sheet metal screw in there instead, and, and that was missing one of those little bushings. Arm, yeah, I think we use the stock arm. It seemed to be it seemed to fit a little nicer with with this piece. This is the old one. So this was the new one here. So the stock arm seemed to this, maybe it's the piece actually that's not a not fitting as well. No, that's fine. Okay, so that's that. Now this side's done. Now this also comes with this rear piece here. So this one is that side. This one looks like it's this side. This one's actually got a bent tab on it too. See that? It's supposed to be like that. So now the question is, These just snap on, I think. So what it was, was this piece, these little dudes ride in the track as well. Then this drops in here, like so. Let's get this in here. This drops in the side of the track. Kinda gotta finagle it in. There it is, like that. That's how it goes. This is in, and this is in. And then when you crank the cable back, all will be in the track. And then this, as this gets closer, then this piece drops in too, and goes in, and drives back in the track. So that one's ready to go. So let's do this other side. So this side's kind of in, and just, just to make sure everything worked, this is how this is gonna go, right? So we wanna just pop this back out, back out because this piece, has to go into here. The only way you can get it in, because this is in a track, is if you do it, put this in, and then slide the last one in. Otherwise, you can't get it in because these are captive. So what we're gonna do is pop this one back out, just so I can show you how it works. So now that comes out, All right? Now what we have to do, we might have to pull them both out and do them both together. I'm not so sure this will reach, but we're gonna try it and see. See if we can get it to go. I think it's gonna have to come out. Yeah. So, this one out. Just slide this back like that. This goes on. Yeah, everything's a little tighter fit than stock. There we go. This will go in here. There. And this will drop in here on this side. Okay, that one's there. This one will go in here. There's that one. Okay, now that's how that goes. Now, all connected. All we need to do is put this one back on here. There's that. And then we can start cranking it back into the track. Okay. 
So we'll use our tool. Make sure it's going. Yep. So there we go. And get so far. Okay, so now we have everything, I believe, the way it goes. There's one more thing. This arm here is now attached through this. This is actually what attaches to the center, push it back and forth. As it comes forward, further forward, it'll reach a limit and then this will tip up because it comes in through this track. You can see here on this side how these come up through this track and actually push the sunroof up. So as it comes forward and stops and then you go in one more, one more bump, it pulls forward and pops the sunroof up by using this little arm to lift up on this back side of the sunroof. Yeah, so we slid this into the track and then this here is for, I believe this was for the shade. So that's what that is. So these are not really the, ready to hook to anything yet. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these pieces back in and I'm gonna through screw them. So that'll hold the cable nice and tight and hopefully we can hand crank it back and forth and have smooth operation. So this might even be a big enough hole already. Yep. So I'm lubricating the track because we do have some fair amount of resistance, which we don't want. So I'm going to bring the track, I'm going to bring it back forward, put some lube up in this area here. All right, so we've got it all back together. The issue the sunroof was originally having was there was a lot of resistance on this side of the track. I don't know if it was one of the plastic pieces or what was messed up or if it just the lack of lubrication and either the, the cable system or the track where everything slides back. But what was happening is, see this tube here is what the cable rides through from driver side to passenger side. And when it was binding up, what was happening is this kept popping out. It's kind of like a spigot fit that this uh, fits into. And I think from going in and out, in and out, it kind of wore, wore it. It's just plastic where this tubing goes into. So what we did is lubricate the track really well, manually operated the, uh, you can override it with that tool on the gearbox of the sunroof. And then what I did is temporarily just wire tie this tube to the cassette so that it can't pull loose. And it seems like as we've gone back and forth and back and forth with it, it's freed up quite a bit. So what I may do just what, when we put it in the car is I may just drill a hole right here in the, in the frame of the cassette and put a zip tie right here just to help support this because I think, like I said, I think it's worn and trying to find a new one of these is nearly impossible. And the used ones are probably gonna be in worse shape than this one. This car only has 40,000 miles on it or so. So I think that's what I'll do. And then we'll, we'll do that and then we'll put it back in the car and, and, uh, and I think it's gonna be okay. So this stumble and the clutch. So where we are is everything is operational. We've lubricated the track, lubricated the cable system. It seems to operate just fine with the hand crank. So we're gonna put the cartridge back, or the cassette, I should say, back in the car. And before we put the sunroof panel in, uh, so it, it's got a couple pins on the panel that, that, hint, that basically pivot off of here. And there's three bolts that bolt the panel to this crossbar. Um, then there's these wedges that you can adjust to make the panel, the sunroof panel, flush with the roof. I don't think we moved them, so it should stay, should be just fine. But anyway, I think we'll put the cassette back in the car, get it hooked up, get it timed, and um, I think I have a theory for how I can get it timed because we've manipulated it quite a bit. So get it installed and see how it goes. While we're reclined here. So we have the cassette is reinstalled. Um, the one thing I did do was the screws that I threw screwed those, uh, I don't know what you call them, stop plates or whatever. Um, I threw screwed them with a nut on this side. And after I did that, I looked at it and I thought, you know, maybe the, I should flip those around so that the nut is on the top side because the screw head's a lower profile and the headliner does have to go here. So I did flip them around. So now the screw head's here. Anyway, the, um, 
the cassettes reinstalled, the drain tubes are back in. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna install the roof panel onto the sunroof on that crossbar. Okay, so we have the cassette bolted back in, we put the panel back on. Um, it's, the shims, I think, were just where they left off. So we bolted that down. There's three nuts back here that actually have a shoulder built into them, so it lines up with the uh, cross member here. Um, keeps everything centered. So I tested it with the, with just the uh, the wrench, the override wrench, and this is all the way closed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the motor off, plug it back in, and and then plug the panel back in that controls the motor and tell it to close. That should theoretically put the motor in a position where it thinks it's closed. Then we'll bolt it back up and give it a try. That's the thought. Turn the key on. You gotta turn the wheel. There you go. Okay. So now. This goes this way, so this would be opening it, right? Mm -hmm. No, that's closing. Okay, closing it. See how it goes all the way. Okay, and then again. So then how to tilt it? You would go close it. This is open now. Okay, that's open. So now I want to close it all the way. See? You got it. Yeah, you got For that one, it doesn't go all the way. You got to hold it. Then, then that. Then and then. Again for tilt. Got it. Okay, so. So there's open all the way. Now this should be close. You put on the air hole. Yeah. Okay, that should be it right there. That should be closed. Mm -hmm. Okay. It works, Mike. So let me explain that again. So in case anybody's doing this themselves. So if you ever disconnect this motor from the cassette and you move either the cassette or the motor, when they're not connected, they'll be out of time. So what I did was I manually closed, and it's really raining out, you hear that? I manually closed the sunroof till it was completely closed and flush with the roof with the hand crank. Then I disconnected, unscrewed the motor from the cassette, and with it holding my hand, I operated the switch to tell it to be in the fully closed position. So now the car thinks it's still attached, but it's in the closed position. Then I bolted the motor back to the cassette, and it was timed. So that's how I did that. Okay? That's some Vanos time. That's some Vanos time, my professional Vanos timer right here. Yeah. Okay, so now we can put the headliner in and all the little trim pieces and we're good to go. No, that's boring. We did the hard part. So hopefully if anybody wants to do this, this helps them. Cause I, I looked myself and the videos are very, very vague and people are jumping around with their camera and you can't really see anything. The cars are gungy, yeah. you know, and they don't show the individual pieces or how to get the pieces out of the track of the cassette which we showed. So I think it's, I think it'll be helpful to somebody because obviously these are prone to breaking. So it's been a fun job. if it's 2036 and you're viewing this, you're welcome.